Hello lovelies, how are you all doing today? I hope you are well. I am, actually I'm feeling much better. I don't want to um, jinx myself, but yeah, it's feeling a bit better. It's day three of me sharing what I eat over the week. And if you remember yesterday, it's lunchtime, I was saying how I've done a bit of an inventory of the freezer. And I said, I think, what was it, three? I've got three, I can't speak, three soups in the freezer. That's okay, but it's not enough. So today, my soup lunch I'm making from scratch, I'm going to make plenty of it so that I can start to restock the freezer. And then in a few days' time, I'll make another soup. I was just waiting for this stock to come back to the wall. Um, yeah, I'll make another soup, a different kind of soup, and put that in there. So again, building up that stock of different things. So I've got a rotation of uh, a rotation of flavours and tastes. But the main thing is, I've got ready meals in the freezer. That's what it's all about. Right, my pan of stock is now boiling. Actually, I want to get it to a simmer. I've just got a couple of litres of stock. Now, the other reason for making this soup today is because, if you remember, whoop la, I've got all this squash left over. The bottom that I used yesterday was really massive. I'm just going to get a spoon because I've got a feeling today. Mmm, lovely pearl barley. A bit clumsy today. So I'm making squash and pearl barley soup. <laughs> Does what it says on the tin. Now let me just just gonna get I will, I will put the full recipe card on the end of this video. Just bring that slightly back up to temperature. You'll notice I'm using a different pan today. That's because, right, let me just set my timer before I forget. So, I want it to go off in 15 minutes. So, da, da. The barley and the squash get cooked separately. The squash doesn't take as long as the barley, so the barley is in the bottom of my steamer. Let's get rid of that. The squash, yum yum. So you can't quite see, can you? Goes in, you can see the little holes in the bottom, goes in the steamer. So that will stack up on that one in 15 minutes. Um, yeah, it's pretty much all there is to it, but there, is a, there are a couple of processes later on. Watch the recipe video, it's all in there. But I just wanted to say something today about pearl barley, and I'm hoping that I might be able to demonstrate when we meet up for lunch tomorrow, I'm going to be making a ton of leftovers. And normally with leftovers, if it's what, sort of one, two o'clock in the afternoon that I've made lunch and there are leftovers, by sort of five or six, I so I'll divvy them out, I'll portion them out straight away, because in their smaller portions rather than leaving it in the pan. In smaller portions, they cool down much more quickly. Get them in the freezer that same day. With the pearl barley, I'm not going to do the, I'm not gonna put it in the freezer until tomorrow and hopefully by tomorrow I can demonstrate why. And it's the, the thing with pearl barley which sometimes gives people uh, problems so hopefully today I'm going to give you a tip to get rid of that problem for you. I don't have that issue, so I'm going to have a bowl of this soup today, straight away. You may be one of those people though that needs to make this in advance, leave it 24 hours and eat it the next day, because these little gorgeous nuggets of loveliness, oh, I love pearl barley so much. Um, they continue to swell after cooking. So they're gonna be in this pan for 40 minutes cooking and they'll plump up and they'll be really, really lovely. But what I'm hoping to demonstrate tomorrow for you is that by, in another 24 hours time, when they've been set aside, you'll see they've got even more plump. They reach kind of maximum plumpness after about 24 hours. 
So like I said, for me, it's never been an issue with my gut, but for some people, the fact that they continue to swell once it gets into your gut, it, it, and talking about into your intestines, once especially it's getting it down towards your large intestine, what can happen, that swelling, it causes irritation in the gut, it can cause you to have um, wind, it can cause you to sort of feel bloated and a bit crampy and just kind of gripey in the gut. So if you've tried pearl barley in the past and loved it in terms of the taste and that lovely bit of bite to it, oh, most of you will know it from scotch broth of course and that's what I remember it from as a kid before I became vegetarian. The pearl barley and scotch broth was the best bit. So if you tried it in the past and you loved it but then an hour or two later, oh my god your guts are killing you and it's put you off over having it again, maybe try this method of cooking it one day and then leaving it 24 hours and having the rest of it the next day or having it the next day not having the rest of it leave it completely today eat it tomorrow just want just going to lower the boil i just want it to simmer gently <clears throat> Uh, yes, so that's why the change of pan today is, rather than using my cast iron, I'm using my steamer so that I'm still only cooking on one ring. So even though I'm cooking these separately, they're just going to steam over this other pot. So one ring and I've got it on the smallest ring and on the smallest flame. Great. Now, costs for this gorgeous... <laughs> I can't wait to nosh it. I haven't had pearl barley for ages actually, so um, I'm really, really looking forward to this. Right, costs. Referring to notes. The squash obviously was free, it came from the allotment. And don't forget, when we get to the end of this week, I am going to do a little separate video to summarise <clears throat> all of my costs. What it's actually cost me, bearing in mind I have a garden. But also I'm going to do, I'm going to work out what it would cost for any of you to follow the exact same week. But if you were buying the veg from the shop, um, yeah, it's just the veg, isn't it? If you were buying all of the other veg, tomatoes, beans, all of that stuff from a shop, what would it cost you? I've already worked it out. Still pretty good. So squash was free. The pearl barley. Uh, I couldn't remember how much I paid for it, so I did a quick, quick look online, um, and it looks to be about two pounds per kilo at the moment. I've used 140 grams here, so that works out at 28 pence. There's a little stage later on where I will add butter. You, look, you can use butter, olive oil, a plant-based butter, anything, whatever you want, but I'm gonna add fat. So my fat, I've calculated at 40 pence, and I've got about eight pence worth of stock. It's actually two liters, um, two liters of stock in there. So all together, um, this is going to cost 76 pence. It's mad, isn't it? 76 pence, I'll get five portions easily. I might even get six, but I will get five portions easily. So per portion, lunch today is going to cost me the princely sum of 15 pence. Woo! <laughs> um, yeah, that's great. That's a great purchase. That's a great cost, I think, considering obviously pearl barley and the butter or whatever fat you use, the, the fat has had to be purchased. So this one takes a while got different stages I'm gonna get on with some other stuff while this is doing its thing come back finish it scoff and then I, like I said I'm gonna put it in a pot I've got some Tupperware set aside already one of these big Tupperwares I'm gonna put it in here so that tomorrow when, like I said when we meet up again tomorrow for lunch I'll show it to you and just show you the difference hopefully you'll be able to see the difference in terms of the swelling. Ah, so what we should do today, that's a good point, isn't it? Once I've had my lunch, I will try, try, try to remember this. Once I've had my lunch and I'm putting it into the Tupperware, I'll try and remember to get a shot of it today before it's done that. 
mega plumping. But otherwise, I'll see you later. If I forget that, sorry if I forget. Um, otherwise, I'll see you back here for dinner tonight. <laughs> see you later. Yay, <laughs> I'm remembering to show it to you. So, obviously, I've had my portion. Yum, yum, yum. Um, and this is what's left. It's still steaming away. So this is what's going to go into the freezer tomorrow. You can see how the barley has sunk to the bottom. So this time tomorrow that should have swollen even more. I'll give it a mix up before I portion it out to put into the freezer. But hopefully you can see the sort of the sort of size of the barley as it is today. And then I'll remember to show it to you tomorrow. And hopefully it'll pick up on camera, we'll be able to get a sense of yeah how much it's it will swell up even more. Right, time to do the washing up, then do some work, and then I can think about supper in a few hours. Hello again, lovelies. <laughs> Welcome back for dinner time. Just before I start in on dinner, oh do I need to put lights on? I'm not sure. Before I start on on dinner, let me show you the soup from lunch again. It's now five hours later and you'll see what I mean about about how it gets bigger. Can you see the difference? <laughs> Look, at lunchtime we could see the barley up to about here midway and now you can see oh it's not because the barley has started to float it's because it's all getting bigger and bigger and bigger and by tomorrow I'm showing you this now in case I forget but by tomorrow we should see barley all the way up to the top as it absorbs more and more and it sort of basically spreads itself throughout the soup. Right, enough of that and let's get on with supper. Today has gone so quickly, it's, um, it's a bit mad. <laughs> I feel like it's only two minutes since I was in here. Two minutes for all of you. I am having tonight, hang on, bang bang. I'm having a risotto again. <laughs> I'm a bit addicted to risotto at the moment, I'll be honest. Uh, tonight I'm going to do pea risotto. I don't have any wine, never mind. So the onions and garlic are sweated down in the butter, adding the rice now. Yeah, I made a pea risotto for when the chaps were here at Easter. <laughs> it's, it's just so lovely. So I thought, oh yeah, let's have another one. I'm using frozen peas from the freezer. That's another revelation to me. <laughs> frozen peas, how brilliant. A nice load of green to add um, relatively cheaply. Right, I'm just gonna let the rice coat in the butter for a minute. So I'm not gonna keep you here while I make the whole risotto, of course not. I just wanted to kind of remember to think to say there's a couple of things with risotto and the first is, actually it's not a couple of things, it's one thing and then something else later. With risotto I would say please use the best stock you can afford. I love my bouillon from Marigold but yeah use a really good stock because <clears throat> if you think about it the stock is so much of this meal isn't it? Um, <clears throat> It's probably, I'm going to just add my first ladlefuls now. There's more stock. Eventually there's, whoop, ah, splashed a load, lost a load. There's more stock than anything else. So yeah, whatever you can afford, go for the best. Right, let's just let that all hobble bubble down. Now the other thing, not only do I not have any wine, I also don't have any parmesan, the, the vegetarian parmesan. What I do have though, and I had it out in the freezer last night, is this is some vintage cheddar. Now again, this is from Easter weekend, so I cooked lunch, but the guys brought over some bread and cheeses for sort of afternoon tea nibbles, and there was this chunk of cheddar left over, so I just whacked it straight in the freezer because I thought, I'm not gonna be using it in the next few days. Don't have a fridge, let's just whack it into the freezer. Brilliant. So I've got free cheese. <laughs> Thanks guys. 
for this recipe tonight and I'm not including the cost of cheese in the recipe today but I will, like I keep saying, when we get to the end of the week I will talk about what it would cost if you had to buy everything including the veggies and the cheese. But what I would say with the cheese is it's not a true risotto unless it's got parmesan in it but if you don't have any, if you can't get hold of it, it's quite hard to find vegetarian parmesan Go for another hard cheese that's got a good, strong flavour. So vintage cheddar, brilliant. And then my little, my little hint and tip on your box grater, instead of using the side that you'd normally grate your ch sort of cheddar and other cheeses on, go to the fine side where you would grate your parmesan. I just find that when I grate on that little side, I use less cheese. I don't know why, maybe it's, we don't use so much parmesan, do we? But a little handful, maybe it's because it's shredded so fine it kind of puffs up big because there's lots of air in the pile once we've grated it. But yeah, I grate it on the small side and use it exactly as I would if I was using parmesan. But because it's a vintage cheddar, it's got that little extra bit of flavour rather than say a medium cheddar. Um, and it will taste different. It will taste different to a risotto made with parmesan. But hey, you know what? It was leftover cheese. I'm going to use it up. <laughs> and I can't wait. Um, sorry, did I say it's a pea risotto? I met? Yeah, I did mention pea risotto, didn't I? Hang on a tick. I'm just going to get another couple of ladle fours in. And then we can talk about costs. I think essentially cost is what everybody's here for this week. As always, the stock is on the back on a really, really low heat, um, just so that when I'm adding it, I don't drop the temperature. I can turn that down a bit actually, so that I don't drop the temperature of my risotto. So cost-wise. <clears throat> I am using 200, what do I use, about 70 grams a person, 280 grams of rice, uh, it's risotto rice so it is more expensive. So for the whole thing, this will do four portions. The rice is 50 pence, <clears throat> the peas, it's a third of a bag and it's about a pound a bag, so it's about 35 pence. Stock, five pence, cheese, free, thanks chaps. <laughs> Onion and garlic, 30 pence, butter, 40 pence. I might switch those two figures around, but it's onion and garlic about 35p, butter about 35p, same difference. So in total, this pot is going to cost £1.60 to make. It's four portions, so we divide by four, and that gives us a cost for the evening meal of 40 pence. Now, of course, if I was buying cheese, it would be more. We've got one, I'm going to do another risotto, well I'm going to have leftover risotto at the end of the week that's got cheese in that I bought, I've costed that out already. <clears throat> so in other words, uh, with that freebie cheese it makes it much cheaper, but even so all the other ingredients are shop bought and it's 40 pence. So today's meals, the squash and pearl barley soup, I mean, it's beautiful, <laughs> it's gorgeous isn't it? I can't wait for tomorrow when it's really, really plumped up. I might have a bowl of that tomorrow for my lunch. I'm not sure yet. It's not, let me see the plan. It's not what I planned, but I might change my plan. Um, but yes, pearl barley soup, pearl barley squash soup, 15 pence per portion. Risotto tonight is 40 pence a portion. So today's two main meals, it's my two meals of the day, because I don't do breakfast. That's 55 pence and I am, eating beautiful food and pigging down on it, really getting stuck in it and loving it. Just gorgeous, gorgeous food. Oh, 55p. Can't say better than that, can you? Right, so my lovelies, I'm going to love you and leave you for now. This obviously <clears throat> risotto, it's slow cooking, but you know, let's go slow once in a while and enjoy the process and use the process to maybe think about other things, maybe to think about the coming few days, what I'd like to achieve, 
maybe think about the last few days and think about what I have achieved and think, yeah, that's good. You use the time to remember funny little moments I've had, nice people I've met along the way as I've been out and about. Just use it as gentle, slow time. Sorry, bang, bang. Yeah. It's a slow dinner, but then every now and again, don't we need to just slow down a bit? Yay. So I will see you all again tomorrow. What's on tomorrow's menu? Ooh. Oh yeah, yum, yum, yum. I'm looking forward to tomorrow. I will see you all then. In the meantime, happy cooking, happy experimenting in your kitchens. Those of you who are growers, I think and I hope by now, certainly in my bit of the UK, the temperature has come up a bit. That soil is starting to warm up a bit, isn't it? We're getting some dry days. I sincerely hope you are getting some garden time. I hope you're getting some seeds in. I hope you're getting your beds prepped. I'm jealous, although I'm kind of not as well. <laughs> I don't have to do it this year. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I'm thinking of you, all you growers. I'm thinking of you and hoping you have a great start to the season. All right, gorgeousities. See you tomorrow for some more what I'm eating this week. Until then, cheerio.